Oh, and down goes Jordan Smith for the second time in this race. Kickstart, Kenny wins. I don't win that much anymore, you know what I mean? Like. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Title 24 this week, presented by NBC Sports. Uh, myself, Ryan Villapoto, uh, here to give you the goods this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got a great show on tap. A lot of, a lot of stuff went down this uh, this weekend. Not a lot of drama. Uh, we're excited to talk about. It. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. Can't wait to hear what uh, RV has to say uh, before we get going. Like we, uh, like we always do. We got to thank our uh, incredible partners, United Motorsports, Boxo. Quad lock and of course Dunlop tires. Um, we appreciate you guys, and uh, we got uh, some segments built in our uh, our show to to give those guys some credit, talk about their great products, and uh, get you guys familiar with all of them. So, uh, man, it was a uh, it was a good race this weekend. RV, I always loved uh, going to Glendale. Clearly, it's a a, a fast track. Um, your uh, your your take, like. Overall, what did you think of it? Did you like the track? Did you not like the track? Was there anything that stood out to you that you want to rip the Band-Aid off on right now? Well, I mean, like you said, it was uh, going Phoenix there, Glendale, um, yep. the biggest floor we have. You know, dude, that one rhythm section was was uh, was super long. I think I, I think I thought I heard 16, 16 jumps in that thing, and a lot of those yeah, were all yeah, yeah, yep. five footers, you know. So, and when we mm -hmm. talk about five footers, we kind of talk about five foot tall by the base being five foot wide too, and then we call the littler ones three footers. But yeah, that's a that's a lot of jumps in that rhythm section. So that was that was pretty cool to see. Um, dude, those guys had to have their timing on point and not forget where they were in that rhythm section. Um, you know, we got to see uh, Nate Thrasher go down in that rhythm section, just coming up short on the on one of those combinations, um, you know, mid, mid straightaway down that long, long rhythm section. So, uh, yeah. you had to really stay on your toes there, not for kind of forget where you were, but other than nonetheless, track was tough, typical, uh, um, Glendale really slippery, hard, uh, but also some pretty good areas yeah. where it is a little bit tacky. The turns got rutted up, I think a little more than kind of normal than we've maybe saw that, that than what we can see sometimes in, in Arizona there, sometimes it's very blue groove and just hard. Um, yeah. so good, good racing, good racing surface there that, that we saw at, at Glendale. Hey dude, like watching you and your career and your riding style, do you feel like, did you like those style tracks over like what, how, over how Detroit was? Um, I did. I kind of liked, uh, I, I did like the, um, the Faster stuff that, like, Faster, but also the the the, the material, the dirt that you could really kind of slide around mm -hmm. on. Um, really have to trust the sides of your tires. Where we saw Jordan Smith go down there on the like coming onto the start straight there, uh, coming across. I mean yeah. that thing was just like ice right there. So if you can be right. quick in those those spots on the track and hold actually inside of of a lot of the riders, um, you know you can make a lot of good, uh, uh, make some good headway, potentially some good passes there. Right. Um, one of our fans, uh, as far as the track had a question for us, um, Reyes, um, asks, why do you guys think that, uh, no one quieted anything, especially, uh, on a rhythm lane so long? I mean, why you, I, I haven't asked you this RV. So why do you think we didn't see anyone quad in anything? Go for it with the well, rhythm. Lane. I mean, watching that, watching that rhythm section all night throughout mm -hmm. race day live, the, the, the day program, and then into the night show and into yep. the main broadcast, like those guys, a lot of those rhythm sections. Yeah. Were they holding those four fifties like wide open? No, they weren't, but um, it wasn't a slow rhythm section. So if you would have popped off a quad in there, it would have been massive, massive, <laughs> massive yeah. jump, right? So, and we got to see some, um, uh, in the presser with that was one of the questions that uh, Jason Anderson got asked and answered too. Um, you know, look, these guys don't want to have to jump the quad. If it's available, I felt like in that rhythm section, watching every one of the riders from jet all the way down, um, maybe there was potential to do it. But for me, I thought what they were doing was, was already kind of gnarly, you know, like keeping, mm -hmm. keeping track oh, of yeah. where you were the one, <clears throat> the specific jump I was talking about with Thrasher, some of the go those guys were seat bouncing it. Some guys were standing up through it. So that one obviously had a smaller takeoff. Um, and as you start to generate more speed through that rhythm section and you get towards the end there, 
um, it becomes a little harder to time once you get over a certain mile per hour, you know, like as, yeah. as you're then trying to modulate the throttle where if you can stay, you know, third gear through that entire rhythm section and kind of have an equal throttle through every yeah. triple. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just, it's easier. It's safer. Um, as soon as you pop off one of those quads, you're automatically going like five to 10 miles an hour quicker at the end of the straightaway, you know? And then as you know, RV and all of our viewers and listeners, well, those speeds start going up. And then when you quad and if you make, if, if you mess up and you case something when you're quadding, you have so much speed, so much height that in, you mo more times than not, you're not going to ride it out. There's no, no. there's no shot. What, what <laughs> whatsoever. I will say this. Uh, I'm a little bit older. You, you never raced um, at the pinnacle of the sport on a two stroke. Now you have ridden super cross two stroke yep. on a super cross. That's where the two stroke was nice and longer lanes like that RV, because you could just, you, you didn't have to worry about the speed as much because you could hit everything, especially triples like tapped in, uh, in, in second much gear. So you just, exactly. You didn't. Yeah. So timing things, uh, yeah, you had to time stuff, but it was a little easier because you just, you were pretty much tapped out in second. Yeah. And so that's that the was difference, nice. like you said, that was with 50, like they have so much get up and go, you come yeah. out of a turn or in that rhythm section, you give her a little too much of the berries. You're going to end up you know, <laughs> you you know, overshooting or, you know, like you, like you said, it really comes down to a critical situation when you do, when you are generating that much speed and that much height and you're, and you land on one of those jumps. And if it would have been, um, you know, a landing on a five footer or even the three footers, the smaller ones, and you come to a dead stop, like you are going down, you know, and it's going to be pretty, yeah. pretty catastrophic, not to mention your ankles and everything else right. that you case those things. So, yeah, um, I'm glad, I'm glad that there was no quads. Um, Me too. In that section. Me too. I thought that, you know, there was, uh, I think Kenny was doing a little bit different combination in there. Yeah, which uh, Jet was. Jet. Yep, I was. think I watched Jet do this RV in in practice. He was quietly doing it, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna he's gonna hold this to the main event. But he would come out of that first corner. He would double instead of like roll and then single up onto that like step mm -hmm. up tabletop thing they had. He would like hit that little roller on the inside. He would double, then backside that tabletop, and then go three, three, three three single, single but he's yeah. kept, he kept he i think he was sizing up the quad into the corner I, that's what i think he was doing um so he ne ended, he ended up never doing it uh but at, but while and and for the record i i um i'm with you on the quads you know i know a lot of people have opinions on rhythm lanes and whoops and lengths and all that i i think quad like when, anytime there's a quad i i i think that is a recipe for disaster i second you on that uh speaking of quads enough of uh, uh rv and i talking about it the man jason anderson which had a great ride this weekend he uh he tells us about the quad and why uh why he doesn't like them or didn't do them yeah, but to be honest, nowadays with quads or anything like that, I'm not going to be the first one to hit them. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm too old. And to be honest, I thought um, all day I thought we were going to go uh, the line that Kenny was doing where he jumped off the thing and then was going 3-3. I was waiting for someone to go big to big. And honestly, that type of stuff at the age I'm at right now just gives me anxiety. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I feel like to be honest, right now, a, a 450 motorcycle, those quads are relatively easy. It's just the, the amount of error that is involved with maybe it going bad or anything like that. I'm thankful that no one was willing to take that risk because then we would all just start doing it, you know? Well, nowadays you can actually over jump stuff on the 450, and oh, that's dude. what makes it tough, the timing side of things, yeah. Dude, okay. Right he, he hey. Exactly what we were talking about and and for the record all of our viewers and listeners i haven't even seen that sound bite until right yep. now so i'm not basing what rv and i were talking about rv i don't think you saw it either and if did you see that have you seen I, that? I, I saw it right before our show but yes i um yeah. that is fact right there we both spoke on it all three of us spoke on it kenny's actually four of us you know jason kenny and, and myself and your and and you so um, yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Uh, these bikes have so much power. The timing is the critical part. And oh. like Jason said, it was big to big. It wasn't big to a, to a, to a smaller one, to a three footer. Like I was talking about, it was, it was a five footer to a five footer. If you were to actually step that off, you're probably, 
looking at close to 70, 70 something feet in the middle of a rhythm section, um, you know, carrying all that speed. So if there were a mistake at that speed, it's very, very catastrophic. So, um, like he said, I was, I was glad that nobody did it. I thought it kept the racing close. Cause as soon as somebody pops off one of those quads, yep. Yep. Um, it's automatically like half a second a lap and then you could, your brace, your race could be get broke up and pull away or like one mistake. You could have a guy completely out of the series. Um, yep. if, he, if he falters on, on a quad like that. Right. Uh, shifting gears to the, uh, 450 going to get into the nuts and bolts here. Uh, if you haven't yet check over, uh, go over to United motorsports, uh, .com. check their website out. Um, they got a great website, just a great company, uh, six locations across Ohio and Kentucky. And remember, uh, hit the, uh, if you're watching right here, go to uh, www.unitedmotorsports.com slash title 24. Um, they are doing a, a one-time deal where when you sign up, you get $15 credit uh, to your first purchase. And then they're going to be picking out winners each week to give an additional 50 bucks, uh, to, to, to a purchase. So, uh, really cool what United Motorsports is doing and, uh, we appreciate you. And with that said, that leads us to the, uh, United Motorsports moment of the night and RV, of course, uh, you know, it's going to be Ken Roxon, just an incredible win. Uh, does it come as a surprise? Heck no, it doesn't. I mean, you go back to a one, I was talking to my dad yesterday about this and, you know, like go back to Anaheim one, the guy crushed it, uh, in the heat race, then he goes down and then kind of, he's been in a slump ever since then. I feel like, so, uh, on paper, um, is in a true result of just how well he's been riding and what his, he's capable of just, uh, dude made it happen. I mean, did it come to surprises you or like, what did you think when you were watching Kenny? I, I, I figure, I figured before the season started, we had Kenny with, with one to three wins, um, at, you know, nice. when this thing all wraps up in the end, um, mm -hmm. rode really well, like you said, at Anaheim one, then we had our two mud races. Um, I, I, it was bound to happen, you know, getting, putting himself in, in a good position off the line and, and riding the way Kenny can ride. And, and I look, I think that that track, um, Glendale, that might've been, it might've suited his, his, his riding styles a little, you know, Kenny very smooth on the throttle, um, his whoop speed. I thought his, his motorcycle and the whoops this weekend, I thought was maybe some of the best motorcycle, maybe one of the best motorcycles out there. Um, yeah, for especially sure. heat race qualifier. Like he, he was able to yeah. just blaze a trail through the whoops faster than, than, than most. So Looked like the bike was working well. Um, Kenny was in in, in good headspace. He rode phenomenal. Zero mistakes. Um, and I, I that's the Kenny that that we know. And I think I think he can do it again too. I think he's gonna he's gonna win a couple more in this in by the end of our uh, by the end we time we wrap this series up. Um, yeah. But he's looking well. The Suzuki's is is is, is working well too. Um, it's it look it's it's pretty. I said this last year. It's really cool to see. Um, this is that HP Suzuki team and, and, and them yeah. coming together and, and <clears throat> Dustin pipes and his dad putting that thing together with progressive and, uh, man, they, they got a couple wins this, you know, uh, from last year and this year, the seasons, and they're going to keep building on it. So it's, it's cool to see. Yeah. That team's done a uh, great job and, and RV, you talked about them a lot last year. It was, you know, their first year getting going. They got some great guys there. Um, Larry Brooks, uh, in particular, um, with his history and the amount of success and legends, uh, within the industry that he's worked with riders, uh, you know, guys like Jeremy McGrath, Chad Reed, uh, he's got a lot of wins and championships, especially in supercross. So, uh, those guys know what they're doing and it's cool to see. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you, when I, when I listen to Kenny and it's almost like he, he says like he, you know, he knows he doesn't, uh, he doesn't win that much anymore. I don't think he said that exactly, but something uh, along those lines, like what's your take on his, his him, him mentally. And, and why do you think that it's, it's a surprise for him to, to win? And why do you think that he doesn't almost like believe in himself that he can't go on and crack off, you know, four to four to six wins? Why, why do you think that? Ah, uh, man, I think he's chosen a little different road, um, than, than the typical, um, you know, supercross motocross, Eli Tomax of the world. Um, you know, he's, he's bounced around from, from world supercross to now, um, super motocross and he jumped into high point last year. Um, you know, so, and I also think that, look, he's got two kids, he's older, he's been in this game for a long time. Um, I think, 
I, I like his mentality, his thinking. And, mm-hmm. you know, sure, if, if a championship was there for the taking, you're going to have Kenny take that. You're going to have to give him a really good shot, that right. shot. At, but right mm-hmm. now, as he sits, right, he, uh, I think the points are he's 20-ish or 18 or so down. Um, yep. You know, so a decent gap, uh, not not completely out of it, but essentially out of it. I think he's in a, he's in a, yeah, 15 down for Kenny right now. Um, yeah, looking I, at the points. Yeah. Realistic with what he is capable of doing. He knows he's capable of winning, but maybe he, he, he's just not in it for that long haul. And I think that's also one of the reasons why he's chosen to race this different series and races and, and not, um, you know, just not the cookie cutter supercross motocross. Um, yeah. He's, he's bouncing around. So I think it's a mentality thing. I think it's where he's at in his life, where he's at with his family and his career. He still loves racing. He can win a yep. race. We, we just watched him knock down, knock down the, his first win. The, of the best season. kick. Yeah. Kick, I mean, dude, he, he whipped everyone. I mean, he put on yep. a clinic. He put yep. on an absolute yep. clinic. So I, you know, I, I think it's just probably a little bit of a mentality thing. I think he, if it, like I said, if it's there for the taking, he's going to take it. But I also think that, Kenny's been in this game long enough. He's had some gnarly injuries. He's able to been able to come back from those injuries um, and still be able to be one of the top guys. But maybe he just isn't really, you know, like I said, Dude. in it for the like the championship, like really going to put put it all out on the line, if that makes sense. Yeah, dude, it, it totally does. It makes a, it makes 100 percent sense. Um, one thing before I get into uh, Aaron Plessinger. Um, I, I want to, I want to give Ken a shout out. So, uh, if, if you, if you guys haven't watched the SMX insiders post race show, go do it. Uh, will Christian talks to Kenny about, uh, you know, the, the bike setup and, and listen, it's, it's no secret. Um, if you guys are in the trenches and supercross and motocross RV, you know how it was. So when he was at RCH, it was, uh, dude, it was a roughy road, 120%. Now we can laugh and joke about it. Kenny and I, and, and everyone over there. Uh, there was some massive heartburn. Kenny was young. Um, but what he said to Will is he's like, listen, I haven't changed my bike much. And, uh, you know, if, if I go to the track and I'm not feeling too comfortable instead of changing the bike, I would, I would rather make the adjustment myself. And I was thinking, I'm like, damn dude, why didn't you have that approach when when you were at RCH? It's kind of like, because I would tell him, you know, I'm like, listen, dude, I know you want your bike to work a certain way. It's not going to work that way. So yeah. like, can you like, you know how it is RV. Yeah. You, you, you have, sometimes you just have to, you have to adjust what you're doing based on how your bike is handling. hundred percent. And, and a lot of, like, a lot oh, of it's gotta, no, it's gotta yeah. work this way. I'm like, dude, it's not going to stop thinking like that. And uh, yeah. so, Kenny, I just want to tell you, great job. I, I, I know. Well, I don't. I shouldn't say I know, but RV, it's got to be so much easier on him mentally having that approach. Like, okay, listen, I know the bike's only going to work a certain way, so I just need to. I need to change what I'm doing. I'm happy for Kenny, um, as far as that goes, right? I mean, yeah, no, hundred percent. And to your point of 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 you know, there's some of these motorcycles do things really, really well, and they do other uh, other places on the track they're not so well. Um, and if you fix where they're not so well, and it, they, a lot of times where they were good, they're not good anymore. Right. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you can only get the motorcycle so good. Um, and like you, like you said, Kenny, instead of just chasing the motorcycle, he's maybe saying, okay, I, this bike doesn't go well in that line, or I have to adjust just like back to my old Kawasaki. It really liked to ride the outsides a lot. It was very hard to get that motorcycle to go inside and ride the lines. Right. Dungeon. I would never ride the like really the ride the lines Dunge would ride mm-hmm. in Supercross because the motorcycle really didn't do it well. So right. you, you got to know that and, and 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 realize that and be okay with hey I'm just going to have to do it like this. Not try to right. critique, change that motorcycle and to make it do something mm-hmm. that uh, it may not really like to do. Yep, good stuff, Kenny. Um, hey TDS four o four. Uh, is there anything that's going to stop Kenny now that his confidence just went to the moon? I mean, I think the only thing that's going to stop him is himself and yeah. some other great riders. Listen, the field is so deep and we're going to talk about this. I don't like, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't sit here and tell you what is going to stop him. I mean, dude, he's good. I don't, I don't think that, uh, I wouldn't say that he will get on a roll by any stretch, but, uh, I, I mean, I don't, 
That's a that's a good question, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, Kenny's got to just look. He's got to put himself in good starting positions every 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 main event start. And we we've talked about this. We we, we beat the death horse all the time. It's starting position every yeah. single. And if you, I don't care who you are. We've just watched Jet now not get off the line the last few weekends, where you know up front, um, and you can see. Even of Jets, Jets caliber, how hard it is to come through the pack, how hard it is to, to race these guys and 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 make the moves and 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 come through the pack, like uh, to get to the front. You know, it's just not going to happen. So you got to put yourself in a good starting position. So I think any one of these guys, but we're talking about Kenny and this topic is t- Kenny. He's got to put himself up front, good starting yeah, position. Yeah, he does. He did right there, and I think mm-hmm. he has more shots, like I said, to win more races this season. And last thing on uh, on on Ken Brandon Benham asks, do you think Kenny would uh, be winning races or ride as good as he is if he wasn't on a Suzuki? For the record, I th- I think he'd be doing exactly the same. So what what's your thoughts? Yeah, you know I think that uh, look Kenny Kenny has been at the been on the factory side um, for many many years, and now he's like semi factory. Call it. Uh, um, I personally kind of like where he's at. I think that it gels with his vibe, who he is as a person. He, yes, is he serious? He is a serious, um, you know, racer when it comes to race time. But Kenny also likes to have fun and joke around and freedom. And, yep, and for the freedom and and this AGP Suzuki might be exactly you know the perfect mesh of being able to be have a, a decent enough platform and motorcycle but also have the leeway he wants, um, you know, on the political side with, with, with the teams and, and, and sponsors and things like that. It's, it's definitely more free over there than, than it would be anywhere else. And I think that, that he gels with that. That's something that he, that he wanted, I believe. Um, as far as jet and Eli goes, like what, uh, we got, b- before we roll the sound, I want to get, to, uh, yeah. your, um, your ideas and your thoughts on the, the battle between jet and Eli, um, what, what did you think of that? Did you, or did you, you may not even have thought of anything. Um, I thought it was good to see. I got to see the presser of, of, of jet talking about, you know, Eli and racing Eli Tomac and, and passing Eli Tomac. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, we have, we, we have such, um, <laughs> different, you know, uh, age and a huge age gap, right? You have a young kid yeah. coming up and you have Eli, basically kind of on his way out. This is one of his, you know, potentially his last season. He hasn't really talked about it, but it could be we right now is what we could be seeing one of one, his last season yeah. and a hell of a season at that. Um, you know, I know a lot of, uh, um, you know, people are kind of giving him some, you know, I've watched got on vital and it's like, man, Eli should retire. Do you really understand what you guys are talking <laughs> about when you say, hell you no, they retire? don't, you know, no, I mean? they don't. They don't, you know, I mean, yes. Is he on form old Eli, what we saw last year before being hurt? No, he's not, not yet, but he's still one of the, one of the best damn riders out there and give the guy some slack, give the guy some more leeway. And if he ends up sticking kind of where he's at and finishes out his career, where he's at, that's still, uh, that's still one hell of a season to, to finish your career on. So, well, um, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. dude. And you just got me, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow my top right now, just because I was thinking <laughs> about this this morning. I'm like getting ready, kind of mentally preparing, and I'm doing my workout, and I'm thinking, you know, like to your point, you got on the, you got on the, on the boards, and people just, you know, they're chirping. And here's the thing, okay? Think of how, think if Eli didn't race this season and he went out the way that he did. Think of, take everything into consideration. Think of the type of competitor that Eli is. Think of what he's accomplished and just, you know, what he is as a whole, as an athlete. He said in the off season, he didn't want to go out that way, okay? And that he wanted to go out there and give it another shot, okay? I would rather him do what he is doing than have not, or it have ended the way that it did. So listen, is it working out the way that, uh, that he was, is hoping right now? Probably not. Is huh. it still early? Uh, it's getting, it's getting a little too late in the season. You know, we only got what one more race, two more races, and we're halfway through the monster energy supercross series. So, yeah. uh, but, but at, 
after that, if he doesn't figure it out and he doesn't get to where he was last year, who cares? Mm. Dude, he's going out there. He's doing the best that he can do. And you know what? That's all you can ask from the guy. It's a completely different season. This season is, is top of the history charts as far as competitiveness and how close the championship battle is. One of those reasons is because, knock on wood, because so many guys are staying healthy. healthy so it's yep. going to be it, it in, in nature – is going to be harder for that guy. Get like, give him, give him, a, give the man a break. I think he's doing all right. And you know what? Yeah. If he's not the Eli of old, who cares? At least he, at least he's not a quitter and he wanted to go out and, and give it another that he's try. Still out there. Yeah. Be thankful that he's still out there, that he's still putting right. On dude, it's like, come really, on, really man. Like, right. Right. Yeah. And you know what? If, if he gets going, great what that'd be a hell of a story and it'll be great for the sport and then he can retire for for everything that i'm hearing i i feel like this is going to be his last season yep uh, but you know what i command the dude for going out there and, and and wanting to go out on his own terms and not ending it the way that it ended last year for him in denver and uh, you know what if he doesn't reach the true uh peak of where he once was probably not going to who cares? He's still a bad man, and he's going to be on the Mount Rushmore of of the sport. He's the second winning a Supercross racer um, as far as wins go of all yep. time behind the king of Supercross. So, man, I just get off the dude's back. And and what you said, RV, embrace the dude. Be pumped for him. Yeah, wow. and not to mention, guys, he's already got uh, one Triple Crown win. It's not an overall yet, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's, it's – it's it's a gate drop against all the same dudes, and he's he ended up on top of the top of uh, top of that step in in one, in the third triple crown at Anaheim too. So the guy's not far off. Um, yeah. I think he ain't no scrub, bro. Uh, and and everybody's got to uh, if this is what you're watching of his last uh, hurrah, you better be thankful for it because it it's gonna be it's gonna be gone and over with. Um, and That's everybody right. then pretty soon you'll be back on vital everybody and been like, man, I wish Eli was back there. I see that all the time, man. I wish you were racing. You know, it's like, yeah, well, it's it's long gone now, buddy. So, um, yeah. um, so that that was uh, dude, awesome stuff. Um, I agree with you. So kind of like what we were talking about with the quad. Um, you know, uh, RV and I just sitting on our couches, retired, talking about what could have, should have, what we would have done back in our day mm -hmm. or not have done back in the day. Jet Lawrence talks about racing Eli and what that was like, because in the off season, Eli had said, or pardon me, uh, Jet had said that uh, he looked forward to racing Eli. And you got to think about this is Jet has never when we roll this tape, you got to keep this in mind that Jets really never raced with Eli very much battling, okay, and learning what Eli does, maybe learning what Eli doesn't do. So just keep that in mind, even though there's been, what, six six races uh, throughout the series. Yep. Um, roll the tape, and let's see what Jet says about uh, racing Eli. It was just kind of learning this, uh, obviously, how he kind of flows and kind of learning where – kind of the kink in the armor could be almost and um it was cool like I kind of like it was cool to kind of follow him because like uh obviously nowadays it's not like the, the the exact same as the beast as it used to be um but it's still it's still Eli Tomax so it was kind of cool to follow him just learn off him and, and this kind of uh I just got close enough of where we can kind of maybe make a a pass and uh, I was looking forward to a battle but I was able to kind of just get on the inside of him a little bit and give a still leave a bit of room and then kind of just put my head down and just keep on clicking the laps off and I got a got a safety kind of safety net with a bit of a gap and just I uh, kept on trying to see if I can chip away to Jason but I just end up running out of time. Mm -hmm. What do you think, RV? Yeah, no, I, I look like you said they haven't really got to Jet hasn't really got to follow um, Eli right. very much. Um, and like I had mentioned when this uh, uh, started, this topic was, is, is, mm -hmm. is the age gap is the maturity gap. Um, the amount of races that Eli has under his belt versus versus jet. So, um, you know, look, we got a, for the viewers watching, we got jet and, and, uh, Eli you can look, Eli just kind of yeah, went outside, didn't really fight him for it. You know, I think he knew it was coming. Um, that's the veteran and Eli, if he could stick with him and, and, and keep, keep pressure on him. But I don't think he wanted to, uh, you know, have Jet behind him. I'd, you know, he he re rolls reversed. He wanted to be the follower behind Jet there, and see, maybe he could learn something and see where he can, 
elevate his speed a little bit. You know, that's what I yeah. think Eli's missing right now is just the just the speed necessarily isn't there. He doesn't want to hang it out as much, maybe. Um, as we've seen in the past. And uh, yeah. I thought it was a good, good interview from Jet. You know, um, you think they're going to you think they're going to beat him up as far as like what he said? He's not the I think Eli, they might be old. Yep. I, I think they're I think the fans might beat him up a little bit. You know, I, I, I chalk that up to once again is is, uh, you know, just yeah. being young and not being in that position. I thought I I I read between the lines. I, I hear what Jet is saying. He's he's stoked to be able to to ride with Eli and and uh and see where his maybe weak points are uh but nonetheless he he was able to make a quick move on him and, and pull away so um i'm hoping to see that we're gonna that eli it, he's not out of the game just yet but i want to no, see not. if he can if he can bridge that gap and we you know not even for the championship's sake but just for for race wins and see if he mm -hmm. can see if he can get back in there and solidify himself as, as uh, you know, win some more of these races on his, on his way out. If it is, if it is his last one. Yeah. I, I would say this much. And uh, if that was for the win, that pass was for the lead, I should say, um, you know, you talk about the changing of the guard. I think that was one of the topics uh, of the opening of the show in Anaheim RV is like, it, have we seen a changing of the guard? And if I'm Eli, I would have been pissed. I'm like, why are you guys just chalking it up as there is a changing of the guard? And does Eli feel like that? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't feel like that was a changing of the guard type of move because it wasn't for the win. It was late in the race. And I think to your point also, is that yeah there was an element there where eli was probably like let me let me follow this dude and and for as long as i can and see what he's doing and maybe i can learn something that's going to help me get back in the position to be in this championship battle so yeah i don't know i don't think it was uh um cd hd hl 230 that's a heck of a uh, uh, handle there. Uh, why didn't Eli put up much of a fight against Jet and basically let him buy RV? You answered it. Uh, you said exactly right what what you thought and why he did mm -hmm. that. I like uh, I like Cooper Webb, bro. Um, Cooper Webb. He says um, he rode like you know the emoji crap emoji and yeah. um, like I I, I was thinking. Uh, we're watching some video of of Cooper. Uh, he's in front of Chase Sexton right now, and yeah, he just uh, a lackluster performance. But historically, he's never been good here. Myself personally, I feel like be because he's never been good here. And I wanted to ask you this, RV. Do you feel like maybe the the tempo and the faster track doesn't suit his style? Do you think there's any um, validation to that? To that? that comment or not or not really yeah i, I look at, like it's historically he hasn't done the greatest on hard pack is probably what i'm yep. gonna go with um mm -hmm. if you guys if, if anybody ever really watch coop come into in, into his turns watch how aggressive how strong he he puts on the front brake right so his riding mm -hmm. style is 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 you know um very uh, aggressive isn't the word but he knows how to turn that motorcycle he knows how to bring that 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 motorcycle in there under major load under the front wheel and when it's slippery like this when it's that type of dirt that texture um you know maybe he's just not as comfortable as you know once we get to the east coast where he can really d dive in there and grab that front brake i've heard in the past through the pits of like there's nobody that 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 uses the front brake as much or as as hard as he does um I, i've heard it's pretty um carlos actually when he was at at red bull ktm he had uh -huh. mentioned that to me he goes the guy uses the front brake like un like massive amounts of power in it and and so potentially that's what it is but you know i think that that uh that wasn't a bad showing that wasn't a bad outing for him i think he's still in this thing for you know i think guys need to don't sleep on coop because he's once we get back east, we get to Daytona, we get where, you know, um, where the dirt tends to be a little more tacky, where those very inside lines um, are really strong, where Coop's really strong on those very tight inside lines. Um, I think we're going to see him, um, you know, get some more of these wins. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, um, I what do you think of that move by uh, by Coop just using up? using up the track on jet. Yeah, right here. What do you think here. of that? Sand turn here. Um, I've, 
free game, buddy. Like, you That's know, right. you're out there, out on the outside, you know, jet, um, you know, I don't think it was dirty by no means. Uh, Coop kind of made a little mistake there. He ran him out into the sand out, out to the out wide. Yeah. Um, I'm, that is a, that's a, that's I would have done it to him. Exactly. <laughs> that's a big track, big right. Heads up racing, knowing what's, what's happening, running them out wide, using up all the track and, uh, you know, end up having jet go off the track and jump back on, obviously right there mm -hmm. in front of mechanics area, but nothing, nothing too crazy. I know. I think I saw a comment of like, ah, off the track and he's back on the gas. Well, he was literally off the track for like five feet, right? That, yeah. was, that was the safest point of entry back onto the track. Um, and he just followed suit right back into the pack that was behind him. Yeah. And, and I feel like the AMA, uh, they, you know, when you get knocked off the track or pushed off the track, it's a little different than self-induced where like where you're making yeah. a mistake and you go off the track. Like that was kind exactly. of, I mean, everything is a racing incident. I know like the, you know, the, the, the people on the boards are going to chew us up for that. If we, if we make the wrong, uh, the wrong call here, but at, at the end of the day, uh, he lost positions. Um, as you'll see, uh, that probably would, uh, would help the situation. Look, I mean, the dude is completely out of control right there. So anyhow, um, uh, I got to give massive props to Chase Sexton, uh, RV for a couple of reasons. Number one, letting us all know that, uh, he was a little banged up because if he hadn't, I mean, we would have been chewing him apart right now and him yep. riding right riding like a scrub. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Chase Sexton, for being open and honest. I guarantee you, uh, you saying that and us sharing it on the broadcast um, uh, didn't, a change, uh, didn't change uh, anyone's race strategy, I don't believe, and uh, it didn't uh, hurt you uh, in any way, shape or form as far as results go. And it was able, it gave us an opportunity RV to just say, Hey, look, dude, go out there, do the best you can. And you know, we made him look like a hero or, or didn't, didn't have to wonder why he wasn't performing at the top level. What, I mean, what did, do you even want to comment on, on how he rode or what? Like, what he mean? rode well, you know, dealing with a bone contusion, especially on that track, the high speed, how hard it is to like the, the, the dirt being very hard and blue groove, the feedback through the motorcycle is much more than on say like Detroit, right. Where the dirt's a lot mm -hmm. softer. So, um, probably a, a major struggle for him, but he went out there, um, and, and left it all out there on the track. You know, I'm sure when I'm sure he wasn't stoked with the ride, um, but they, he, he, he did what he had to do and, and stayed in it, kept this thing alive for himself. Mm. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how long that sticks around, you know, if that's a nagging yep. injury, it does it, you know, if, is it a week and then it's, it, we're back to kind of normal, or is this going to be something that we, that he has to deal with through a couple rounds because, um, if he has to deal with something like that, you know, hand injury through a couple rounds, um, mm -hmm. and we have a couple off nights, like we saw him be par for the course because of his hand, um, yep. that's going to be pretty devastating in, in the championship hunt and the points, you know? So, uh, let's, let's hope let's, uh, let's get the red light therapy. Let's get the ice bath, whatever we're going to do, whatever he needs, um, and let's try to get that thing healed up so we don't, uh, so he doesn't lose any more, any, gr any more ground. Hey, I, I bought a, a little red light therapy machine. Nice. Are you, do you believe in the red light therapy? Are you, a, are you a fan? Um, yeah, I think I, I, I've never, I haven't spent a lot of time. Yes. I believe in all that stuff. Doc G's got all the, all the good stuff. Um, he's got all the toys. Yeah, he's right? got all the toys. So, um, Hey, hey RV, dude. You called it here on Title 24 before the series started. We were role playing and, you know, being, you know, being like the keyboard warriors. And I heard something this week about Chase Sexton. And I don't know if you've heard it already, but I, I just got to bring it up because we need some drama. Do you know, yeah. are you, you know what I, you think? I don't you know. know, I know. This is news to me. I heard that, uh, I heard that he's at the Baker factory now. Oh, is that what you heard? Yep. I, okay. I, I heard that you said, Hey, you gave him five to six races. And if things weren't going the way that yep. they needed to be going, he'd be back there. Now. I don't yep. think that he is. I don't think he's working with, uh, with Eldon, uh, but full time or, or yeah, know. but I heard, I heard some rumblings that, okay. uh, yep. That he was back I'm at the, uh, you called I, it I, here. You called yep. it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I'm going to be honest. Um, you know, I maybe some of the fans are you know disagree, but I think that uh, that's something that Chase needs to explore. Um, I honestly do think he needs to explore that avenue with Eldon. Um, ah, I think he did okay. it long enough, uh, and it's 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 worked pretty well for him. But I I do think that maybe. Um, I, I know Peter Park, love Peter Park. Um, I think he's, he's really, really intelligent with it, it, on the training side. But I also think that having Eldon in your corner that has gone through yourself, that has gone through James, that has gone through me, has, that has gone through Dungey, um, you know, there, that's unreplaceable knowledge. Um, and I think where Chase is at in his career um, you know, he's not, he's not a young kid. He's, he's very established. He knows how to work hard. He's already unbelievably fit, but where are the chinks and can Eldon yeah. identify those because he's had five successful, um, riders from yourself yeah. all the way up through me, Dunge and yeah. James, I had said, um, can he get chase that extra two to 5% that he needs to be one of the best riders to swing a leg over a bike? Dude, that is an incredible analysis, RV. I didn't so, even, that thought never even crossed my mind. And I got to tell you, I, I completely agree with that. And what, what sucks too, like, is like you talking about Peter and Peter Park and, and, and who, who does all his off bike stuff is mm -hmm. like, he, that guy is bright. I've had opportunities to uh, chat with him at length uh, when he was working with Kenny back in the RCH days and just yep. a super intelligent guy. And uh, I kind of believe in, in, in what he does uh, a lot of things in, in what he does in, in his training uh, program. So yeah, I, I dude, that that is 100 percent validation uh i i agree with what you're saying yep no, wow, I, I think, i'm kind of i'm just sitting here thinking like wow yeah I, I i do i think i think that i think that he needs to explore that option i think that 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 potentially even just from the mental side um to have to have somebody like eldon in his corner like i said i love peter park i know he's he's really good at what he does but uh, Peter also is off bike only pretty much, right? He's, yes, he's a familiar with motocross. He's familiar with what we do in supercross. Um, but you cannot discount the years and years and years of that Eldon has spent with yourself, James, Dunge, and myself. And we've all been champions through and have the highs and through the lows that he's had to deal with. And I think that that is something Chase needs to do. I, I, I think he needs to start tomorrow. Yep. Um, you called it. That's right. But man, RV, you did. I, I think it was, it may have been on our uh, lead up, our po our uh, pre-show for yep. uh, A1 opener. And we were, you're, you're going to say five to six rounds. And if, if the, if the train ain't moving in the right direction, he's going to be back. Yep. You you nailed it. Um, all right, dude, that's enough. We got, we have a lot of meat here for the, uh, the two fifty. Uh, again, just a quick, uh, recap on the, uh, the four fifty class it in history. This is one of the best, uh, seasons, most competitive we've seen seasons we have seen in decades, uh, dating all the way back to the, the mid eighties with RJ, uh, O'Mara, Wardy, Glover, all those guys and, and, and Bailey. So, uh, everybody, you know what, we could sit here and be lying to you. If we thought we knew who we were going to win, uh, it's just a hell of a year to be a fan and, and, and tune in and, and see who's, uh, who's gonna, who's gonna rise to the occasion, uh, mm -hmm. for the two fifty, dude, RJ looked pretty darn comfortable in the main event. He had some scares uh, in qualifying practice, but really, I mean, he rode like the veteran he is and uh, was very impressive, I thought. Yep, he did. He um, he was able to break Eli, uh, or not Eli, sorry, uh, Levi. He was able to break Levi. Um, yep. You know, I thought, uh, I was hoping that, I was hoping Levi was going to be able to remount and uh, remount to charge to to bridge the gap up and have have one hell of a race. Um, but he wasn't. So RJ was, was, uh, rode a phenomenal race, um, there at Glendale on Saturday. Um, we just was looking at the podium for, for the folks that are going to watch this on YouTube. You saw Joe Shimoda up there for the very first time. Um, mm -hmm. Levi was second and, and RJ first. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's, dude, it's, it's close race. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's really good to see those two finally, um, you know, really being uh, a player and what I mean, player consistency every weekend. That's, that's one thing that these, 
yep. that the lights guys tend to to um or the 250 guys tend to um you know have some issues is with the day in and day out of of, of racing every weekend but they're showing up every weekend levi himself and rj so this thing's gonna go down to the down to the end and and I'm yeah. it, it, I'm stoked. It's gonna be it's gonna be one good championship fight. Yeah, you got three. Yeah, you got three great guys. Uh, three three riders, very similar uh, in speed. We're looking at a points right here, uh, and yeah. you can see Jordan Smith is behind four points, and then RJ uh, is only behind five points. Uh, most the biggest thing I think I would give RJ Hampshire the. Uh, even though he's five points out of the lead, I would give him the benefit right now only because he won. Uh, mm -hmm. He did it in dominating fashion. They got five weeks off. So uh, I give the momentum to RJ. He was definitely class of the field. He was picture perfect. And what I think was a pretty, uh, pretty important race mentally. Um, and, and there was a lot of pressure on that, that, that race. So these guys, to your point, it's going to be great. Um, uh, if you haven't, if, if you are at a monster energy supercross, go over to the uh, monster energy star racing Yamaha team and check out their boxo USA setup, uh, for our boxo breakdown this, this week, we're going to talk about, um, um, Jordan Smith and his mistakes and what led to eventually we'll get to our, uh, Dunlop segment, due diligence segment, but, uh, go, uh, go check out Boxo, check out their website, boxousa.com. Uh, great company. Uh, we talked about it, whether you're, uh, off-road, you, know, you got boat stuff, dude, they got tool bags, uh, that for off-road boating, you name it. So, uh, you can kind of do, uh, order things a la carte for your, uh, moto boxes also. Uh, I have a moto box there. Check it out. Uh, RV, we need to get you dialed as well. That's right. uh, but the boxo breakdown. So you got Jordan Smith in there. Okay. He was in the lead, right? I believe he was in the lead. Um, yep. And he did he, 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 uh, yep. Yeah, this is yep, watching in the lead the coming onto the start straight here through the sand and right here just pushes the front. Look how, see how it's like literally he was on ice. The bike <laughs> didn't do anything weird. It just started to slide front and rear all together kind of at the same yeah, time. Two drift. Yep. And then just, um, you know, went down. Like that's one of those very critical areas. I can remember Randy Lawrence, my trainer as, a, as, as on, on the, in the 250 class and then also yep. held in the 450 class. That was one thing they always said, do not let your guard down at Phoenix because of the material, because of the dirt. It's a track that can bite you, like just jump up and bite you. And that was one of those things. Come out of the sand. And we see right-hander into the sand, does his normal deal here, jumps in, lands, and all of a sudden it's just the bike just goes away. Um, you know, and and that uh, that right there was was uh, was a – That was the start. Point in the race, man, he was he, he had a nice little gap on, on RJ, and uh, yep. dude, it was gone. Dude. It went away. So let me ask you this. He did the exact same thing in practice. So does that make that slip up even worse? Like, hey, dude, what are you thinking? Is that is that one of those moments for you if you're coaching Jordan? I mean, I definitely would be if I if I definitely would be pissed for sure um, of of a mistake happening twice. Yeah. Um, especially there, you know, I think. Yes, I know it's very easy to make those mistakes, but because of how slippery it is, you should be on your game there at all times, yeah. like trying to have the tire as planted as possible, not use the edge of the tire too much, maybe even change up your at your exit out of this turn and get back to the right more instead of going straight down into the inside to give yourself a little to where you don't have to lean it over as far and lean it over as far. What I mean by that is so you can get more of the round part of the tire on the ground, more of the meat of the tire on the ground. So you have the traction, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, total bummer. That was his, that was the first of, of the mistake that there that really caused caused uh, some havoc for him because he other up until then he had a nice little gap on those guys and was riding well rv and then you know like then one once that happens so then the worst case for jordan right is that he he's got levi right behind him and rj right behind him those guys were you know not far in the pack so the two guys that are is in it for the championship is now they pass you so then you feel like there's some desperation mode and then it just manifests at that point so go go for it <clears throat> yeah i mean look this is big big topic this will probably be the biggest topic of the night here where yeah. <clears throat> where he jumps onto the tabletop there doesn't see 
doesn't see the lights, um, you know, where Jordan mm-hmm. jumps on. And luckily, Levi didn't move in any right right or left direction. Um, he just mm-hmm. clips the bike there, goes off. Wasn't that gnarly of a crash. It wasn't too nasty. But still, we have the lights circled for the folks watching. Um, they are yellow on when you are on the field. When you are down on the field, they are yellow. It shows like on TV, on camera, on YouTube right now with what we see, they do have a hint of red. But when you are down on the field um, and on the floor of that stadium, those lights are, are, are yellow. And back to that, these riders go to riders meeting every morning. And look, I've never read through the rule book at AMA, never have, never will. Um, there's key things that you need to know about. Come on, man. Yeah, you no, I'll be honest. You don't right? want to do some light reading, bro. Yeah, no, no, I'm not no light reading. That's for the team manager. That was for Dan Fahey. Read that, read up the book. So, um, is we only have red cross or meaning red lights on yeah. the face of each triple, right? That is the rule. That's where those are. Any of these rest of these lights are Ricky. There you go ahead. Go read that off. Yeah, here we go. So white flag with red cross or red flashing lights. This flag or a red flashing light may be displayed at the beginning of a triple jump or a series of jumps that indicate a potentially hazardous situation on or near the racetrack, near the racetrack in an area that may not be clearly visible to oncoming riders. Three, until the rider is clear of the incident, passing is prohibited. Riders must tra- uh, traverse all obstacles individually. Absolutely no double, triple, step on, off, etc. Riders must exercise extreme caution and not race or accelerate in an unsafe manner. That's the, there, there you go. Okay, now another one. Section D, yellow flag or yellow flashing lights. What what the what RV was talking about where Jordan crashed indicates a potentially hazardous situation on or near the racetrack. This includes the siding or cool down laps. Riders must exercise caution. Passing is allowed. OK, so, so hold up. Hold, hold up one second. So going back to Jordan Smith on the box. So breakdown. So he, he falls down. Right. And then now it's desperation mode, in my opinion. He's got the two guys in front of him right? RJ and Levi. So now you want to get by these guys. So you're probably riding on the edge. You want to get by these dudes. Okay. And then, you know, get back into the lead of where, of where you were when you're doing that and you're having to ride on the edge, things happen, maybe lacks laps of concentration. And, you know, you put yourself in a position that you don't want to be in to where you're, I, I wouldn't call that desperation RV, what he was doing, but it's just it's it's not it's it's not where he was when he, he he was landing. So as far as a breakdown goes and the mistakes and what led up to that was uh, that that initial crash that he did in the same thing in practice. <clears throat> yep. Yep. And look, these guys uh, I, I always took from back to the lights. This was a topic, big topic like we like we're talking about right now that we see uh, yep. is there's only the Red Cross lights or red lights on the triple faces and as a racer you know that anything is anything is free game unless you see a red cross flag or those red lights those pillars that we just saw on the takeoff of that triple those have lights in it so that being said um yes it's a little bizarre to me that uh that even levi were to to slow down to slow down and, and not jump that because in also, like when you read through the rules, you're allowed to jump on uh, a, a caution flag. That's what it's used for. It, that means it's caution. We're professionals. Um, they obviously don't want you jumping on any red lights or red cross flags just for the safety of medical crew or um, the safety of, of the other riders. But in our professional racing, everything is free game except for those two um, scenarios, red lights or or red cross leg. And like I said, it looked a little red in this film. That's just the camera. That's just the, what the, the camera is showing. But when you are down on the floor, it is, um, it is yellow. So yeah, do your homework guys as racers. <laughs> um, that is your job to know where you can <clears throat> make up time. For instance, can you imagine right there if Jordan would have been more on his toes and 
uh, anticipating maybe something that happened, um, being able to make a, a, a quicker decision while Levi goes double and then rolls the tabletop. Here comes Jordan, triples on and off, boom, right back into second place. Um, yep. Totally so here's capable of doing that. Yep. So here's uh, we're watching the replay and now we can kind of kind of break it down. So um, assuming and then I'm using the Telestrator and trying to show like I thought that the l lights are red. I think that you could say from a TV uh, standpoint, they look red. And yep. uh, so that that's why I said that, like right there to me. And I'm thinking you guys got to remember, like this is in the moment. These guys are still racing. There was not a red flag situation. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, man, like, uh, you know, look, the the, uh, the red lights are flashing. I did not know that they were not um, the, the red lights were not displayed through rhythm sections and that they were only displayed on the uh, triple faces should. Me being an analyst, should I have known that exact rule? Of course, uh, of course, I should have known it. Uh, I will take personal responsibility for not knowing the exact rule, but I am like RV. I've never written the rule book, the written the whole rule book. I've only written uh, read, read sections of it. Uh, this leads us to the Dunlop due diligence section of the uh, of the podcast. Uh, Dunlop, thank you very much. Uh, they are a new partner this year. For season two of Title 24, and we're glad to have them on board. Uh, I bet they were the the riders are asking a lot out of the Dunlop tires uh, this weekend. Uh, Glendale notorious for um, lack of grip, so having Dunlop tires on your motorcycle is certainly going to be a, a help, no doubt. And it just leads us into what we've been talking about in the red flag situations. Uh, as you said, RV, uh, the red flags are only display or the red flashing lights are only displayed on triple faces. Yes. Uh, not in the rhythm lanes. So uh, when we were on TV, if we could roll this uh, replay of what happened with Levi and Jordan, we're on, I'm on the, I'm on the, the broadcast. I'm looking, I'm like, okay, that, that light looks red to me. I did not know that. Um, I should have known that I will be briefed on some more of the, the rules. Uh, nevertheless, um, RV, you talk about it. What, like when, when they're at the riders meeting mm -hmm. and you're going over red cross flags, do they still go over red cross flags and, and blinking lights and, and all that fun stuff at every I riders mean, meeting I, I, in the procedure? Look, it's been a little, it's been a little time for me that, that I've been at a writer's meeting, but as far as I'm con as concerned, yes, I believe they do. And, 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 and 100% they do at Anaheim one, right. Um, once, once these guys get the, the, the whole tutorial at, and after, you know, at Anaheim one now as, uh, from the rest of the races on, um, it's, it's a little more of a hangout session and, and, um, you know, having your coffee down there at, at writer's meeting, but yes, they do run through all of those. And here's the other thing. If you are, if you're not that versed on it, get versed on it. If you don't know exactly what the this means or that means, or you really want to, you know, dig into it because the penalty is big. You jump on a red cross, it's a big penalty. You cannot afford um, to have that. For instance, in that scenario, if that were to be a red cross scenario in that rhythm section, Jordan Smith would be under major scrutiny right now and be docked positions, potentially points. Um, and that would be catastrophic for his, um, championship, championship right. Yeah. His championship yeah. hopes at that point, um, mm -hmm. not out of the, out of the scenario, but this, these two fifty guys we're coming down to, there's only a few races left. So every point counts. So that being said, do your due diligence, know what the, what the, what the lights mean and where they're at on the track and scenarios um, if scared of jumping on that, you know, um, because he wasn't sure. Well, to me that you need to know what that means, because if, uh, you would have gotten landed on by Jordan Smith, that that could have been his championship yeah. hopes over, over a yeah. stupid mistake by, uh, not really kind of knowing the rule. Yeah. And, and, and so for the record, yes, uh, they do, uh, they do, uh, they send out a, uh, an email, uh, and, and are briefed on it before, uh, before each rider briefing. So they, all the rules are clear, uh, each and every weekend again, before, uh, before the rider briefing via email at each round. Um, so I, I, you know what I will say, even though 
in this instance, Levi, um, Levi not knowing maybe exactly how the situation was. If you don't know the situation, and I was talking to somebody about this this morning, if you don't know, because I've been in this situation before, and this is why I'm sharing this story, is I would I would err on the side of caution. So if, if I wasn't sure about what to do with the Red Cross situation, I would make sure that I wasn't going to be penalized, even if uh, I was going above and beyond, like what Levi's doing right there. So he's looking, he's like, oh, what, what should I do? I don't really know. Rather than saying, oh, it's yellow right here. I'm good to go. There's no Red Cross flags. I can let it eat, you know? So I, he erred on the side of caution. I appreciate him for doing that. I think that's the smart thing to do if you don't know exactly. Uh, but at the end, uh, exactly what the rule is. But at the end of the day, RV, I back you. You better, if you don't know all of them, you better know those rules. Uh, 120%, right? Like, there's too much on the line. Nail, yep, there's too much on the line. There's, there's, there's a championship on the line. There's all these points. There's all this bonus money. There's just two. You can't afford to have a mistake like that. That's for that's sure. right. So the Dunlop due diligence section of Title 24 today is, you know what? The riders need to do their due diligence, not RV and, and myself. Um, so it is clear, though, like I, I'm, I'm glad now. So in a, in a rhythm lane situation, we all know that the lights are not red. If So if you see a flashing light, they are yellow. Let it eat unless you see the red cross flag in a rhythm section. If you see the red cross flag in a rhythm section, you best be rolling through there. And if you're not right. sure where you need, where you, if it's past the rider, when you can re resume normal um, speed, I would give it another couple jumps just for security. <laughs> would you, RV? Yeah, yeah. No, you got to definitely... Um... But look, AMA does a pretty good job at the Red Cross flag. I will be on be be uh, honest about that. I think um, it's all just there's there's a little bit of discrepancy out there. But yeah, err on the side of caution. But you shouldn't have to err that much because you should know the rule and know where you can jump. And there's only two reasons why you cannot jump and pass: red lights or red cross flag. And that is it. Other than that, it's free gaming in this professional racing. Yeah, and yep, absolutely. There you go. Good stuff. Hey, uh, as far as uh, Smoke and Joe, were you impressed? Do you think it's too late? I mean, I know he was on the. Oh, I mean, I, yes, what it's too late. Smoke he's, and Joe. Yep, he's uh, points wise, just in general, is just too far out. You know, um, we're coming down to, uh, you know, well, races yeah. are winding down, and he's just not going to have enough time to make up the gaps that he has on three different riders right if it was one rider you could maybe hope for a big major mistake a mechanical and get yourself back in the in in the title fight but you know with the with the three that we have you're not going to have three mechanicals you're not going to have three major mistakes so yeah i think he's he's technically out of it um mm -hmm. they need to really figure out uh he needs to figure out um himself he needs to put himself in better race race positions i might think that's the biggest thing that we've seen um, Joe's a very talented rider, um, you know, is, is, is one of the best, you know, supercross riders out there in, in the 250 class. But when you start where you start and you are maybe a little timid, like he can be when he's around that many people, um, these, some of these guys are just going for it, right? They don't care if you're Joe Shimoda, if you're Levi kitchen, who you are they're if they smell blood in the water or see it, they're, they're going to, they're going to put those moves on you. Um, yep. You know, I think that he's struggling with getting that motorcycle off the line. Um, I don't think it's the fastest motorcycle out there compared to Star and and Pro Circuit. Um, Star being the leader, PC I think made up some closed the gap in between what Star had last year on the PC motorcycles, um, and I think Honda's in, trailing that, and I think that's what you see. I think Honda's probably like the fourth fastest, right? I think the KTM, the Husky, those are those are those are even potentially better than than what he's on it. And what I mean by is just, and it's not at this level, it's not, I'm not saying the Honda is bad. I think the Honda is a very good motorcycle, but what I am saying that half a percent, 1% on, on the line, and you don't absolutely execute your start perfect. You're not going to be in the game when, when somebody else has two horsepower on you or a horse and a half and, and they just do it they do an okay start and they got a better motorcycle, a faster motorcycle than you, then it puts you in a tough scenario. It puts you back, you back gets 
uh, pushed against the wall and you have to perform 100% perfect every time. And as we know, that's hard to do. Uh, before we get to a, a question, uh, Nate Thrasher, gnarly crash. Uh, I did talk to a team member over at the Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, but dude, this was gnarly. Uh, I believe he was in third gear from what I have heard, and you know how it is, uh, RV, just if he wasn't yep. in second and he was in third gear. Um, you just, you end up blowing through the face of the jump and you don't get the lift that you needed. Hated to see that. Uh, I think he's going to be, uh, he was all right. Um, uh, is what I heard. So that's, that's yeah, that was dude. That was brutal. That he, was brutal. I mean, honestly, he got lucky. Um, he's, he's very, very lucky that, that Nate was the trajectory of where he flew off was in between, um, in between lanes. If yep. he would have landed in that same position on his but lower back area on, on track, um, Let's or not on, even talk on about track that. on top of a jump. Um, let's I, not I, even I, talk about, let's not even do that. Have been the yeah, worst. exactly. So, um, was very lucky that he ended up being off the track, but yet what to, to our, our point of what we were talking about earlier in the show with that long rhythm section and adding the quad in, you know, the, those jumps already were, those jumps were already kind of gnarly, right? Like it was, yeah, they're 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 steep they're they're big they're tall um so when you make one mistake just like that you know it you case it and he and he you can get away with a, a decent case but he just had too much of his motorcycle on the front side of that jump um yeah you can see right there pow like, like his i mean only only his front wheel hit the tip of the jump Not exactly and the back was way low on the takeoff there and and look, they got stiff suspension. They got all the best stuff to to try to combat all that stuff. But when you're going that speed and and you have that inertia behind you and you case something like that, and and man, it's like concrete. Those jumps are not soft. So yeah, um, he's gonna be all right. Yeah, he's gonna be all right. Yeah, he's gonna uh, he's got a bone bruise and uh, a concussion. Uh, so I'm sure he'll go protocol. But he's got five weeks off. But good to see mm. that. Uh, you know, outside of the concussion, glad nothing, nothing was broken. Uh, Preston Harvey, 98. Do red flags rule need to be updated? Lots of restarts in Glendale, none for Detroit, 250 main. Uh, I mean, I think that red flag rules are, are pretty good. I think sometimes I, and listen, I need to do some due diligence. I don't even know that there is a specific rule for red flag. I think, that, you know, it's situational. Um, so do you, I, I think like full start or, um, staggered start. What do you, what do you think if it's a red flag situation? That's a, that is a tough scenario, right? The red flag and, and restarting a race. Cause it totally changes the trajectory of, of the race and can change the outcome of, of the mm -hmm. race too. But it's, it's a tough scenario. Nobody wants to AMA, me, no anybody involved wants, nobody wants to pull the red flag. Um, but there's scenarios out there and you, nothing is, you know, you're not going to get those scenarios printed out for you. It's going to be, you know, it's all on the fly. You're shooting from the hip when you pull that thing. Right. Because it's like, it's a split second decision when you decide. So, um, yeah. yes, could it affects so play. much. It affects it so many yeah. other things too. Yep, exactly. So to, to your, to the, to the question for the fans perspective, could it be refined? Yeah, potentially be, be refined, but look, the last thing they want to do is pull a red flag it screws yeah. with the with the racing the outcome it puts them delayed on time because when they're live for live you know, television yeah it's a nightmare a lot of parts yeah it's a nightmare for tv rv as you know i mean you've been yeah. you've been there especially the stuff you were doing with rdl dude if you get yeah. one hiccup um yeah it just it is an absolute nightmare from a production standpoint as far as live television goes uh yeah i think that that's a tough one i mean i think it, I, here's the thing like as far as redoing it rv i think if if it's rather a full restart like everybody lined up versus staggered i think it's situational uh, i yep. think if if they make it to where all right if the red flag's thrown we are going everybody single fire it's it's gonna it's gonna piss someone off you know there's unfortunately there's going to be uh someone is going to be upset about it i don't know that there's anything i don't know that there's a perfect answer i think we'd have to look at the data and see exactly. uh, what right i think we'd have to look at some kind of data that is a good question uh preston thank you very much for that uh yeah i just 
like kind of RV and I are saying, dude, I, I don't know that there's a perfect answer for it. And, right and now. Peter said you can, you can re rack them and you can stagger start them. I mean, as a racer, um, if I'm leading, I'm pissed that we get re racked. Yeah. Um, I'm right. stoked that we're single file, but if I'm racing and I'm in 15th place because I fell or I got a bad start and I, and I'm a front runner, then I'm stoked. I get a restart. So, but from, from me sitting here in, in my office and, and, and as a fan, um, I think after a certain amount of laps, like five or six or eight laps, I know that there's, there is a threshold in there where they, where they go from stagger to gate. Um, but if I'm, if I'm, you know, the racer X racer sitting on the couch, I would say stagger start probably 90% of the time, because that hopefully doesn't change the, the outcome of the race as, as, as yeah. much, um, yes, yeah. yes, it brings them closer together. Everybody is, is now is, is interlocked. But you're not you're not subject to a, a bad start, a whole nother gate drop, and maybe you pulled the whole shot moto or the race one, and then the restart, you're you're tenth, you, right? So like Jorgensen, like Jorgensen, dude, yeah, was in the lead. He's going to the main event, and then pow, dude, yeah, you have the you, you have the red flag. They do the restart to your point, and then dude, he gets jammed up. He he couldn't even finish. His uh, handlebar was locked, uh, jammed in, but then in someone's yep. I can't remember whose bike it was uh jammed up in and yep so to your point there you go uh heart kid 44 how hard is it to regroup after a red flag restart uh I hated it I think because you know you, you just have to get back into the mindset and be, you're out of your groove especially if you were leading dude it sucks how do you do it you just got to uh how hard is it you it, it it's pretty hard because yeah, it's like also, but, like, it's also um it's also all situational uh it's based on you know if you're having a, a hell of a race and you're feeling yep. it you're 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 pissed you're bummed right you're like dude i gotta get back in the groove then it mm -hmm. gives i feel like it gives second and third um uh, yep. a, a chance again but if you're second and third um and you got james winning for example in my scenario or or dunge winning i can see okay now here's my here's my time to shine. Look, we're gonna restart. Um, we're, if it's staggered or re-racking, I think it plays uh, it plays into the guy in second, third's favor um, than it does the guy leading. Because if you're the guy leading and you get the restart, you have to you put get the flag pulled to restart. You're kind of like no matter what, you're kind of you're bummed. You are you're bummed. But if yeah, you're the guy, oh, leading, dude, you're so bummed. Exactly. If you're second, third, or fourth, you're like, wow, okay, I. I I can put, I'm going to put myself in a better position, hopefully, and, uh, you know, have something to say about it. So before, before we get to the, uh, quad lock question of the week, which is going to be absolutely awesome this week. Uh, I don't, I'm trying to think, dude, I like of a red flag scenario that I had in my career and I and there, let's put it this way, other than the motocross of nations in 1998, where they just ended the race completely. There was no restart because it was it was raining so oh, bad. Was at Fox Fox Hills? Hills, bro. Fox yeah. Hills. I remember we were lined up and it was like myself, DV was there, Vilman, and we were all lined up in this corner. And there's this massive hill, right? And you come out of this right hander and this huge hill, and dudes are just scattered on it, RV. And you could, they're like, we're just stopped looking at each other. And then we saw this marshal running across the field and he's got the red flag wave. And I was like, thank God, because we're just sitting here parked in a corner where there was nowhere for us to go. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know that I've ever been in a red flag, uh, quad lock question of the week. Uh, quad lock is a, is a fabulous, um, supporter of title 24. Um, if you haven't checked them out, go check them out at quadlockcase.com. Uh, They've been doing this, uh, this segment, uh, since the inception of title 24, and we're glad to have them on. Uh, my, my case came in handy today, uh, with my bike mount and my, uh, on my, on my road bike, I got a small little one. I posted one on the Instagram the other day. So check out quad lock. Um, I think you will be surprised, but the winner of the quad lock question of the week this week is J King four, three, one J King four, three, one asks, why is there no riders union and why have all attempts to start, uh, and why have all attempts to start one failed? Uh, so, Ooh, yeah, that's a, that's a big topic. J King, by the way, King Kings Island, um, local buddy from up home sent that one in. So, oh, really? 
Yeah, Sick, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to ride arena cross with him. Um, he's from Monroe, uh, Washington. Ah, so, uh, that's yeah, I why send the question in, bro. Send the question in. So he got it in there. The nice. writers' union, man. Um, interesting What's your topic, thoughts, dude. Come on, dude. What you got? Um, I think uh, I'd love to see it happen. I think we should have one. Um, you know, I, there's been multiple attempts, like like uh, like he had said. I re I remember myself sitting in a meeting um, at, at end of the season in Vegas. Uh, there, I think there was about over half of the field um, from privateers all the way up to, to myself, Chad, Kevin was there. You guys um, didn't invite me. Yeah. You know, I, it just, what it didn't happened? go anywhere. You know, where's it didn't go where, anywhere. Where's my, where's my freaking, where's your invite? invite? Yeah. You were already retired. There was no, there was no writers. Oh, well, this is current then. writers. Yeah. 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 So, um, look, I think we do need to have one to some extent. Um, the other thing I, I will say is, is, is um i do think feld prater um you know dirt works everybody really does try to keep everybody happy um you know so i don't i do i think there is a place for it yes i think there's a place for it uh um how do we get it going I, i'm not really 100 sure i mean everybody's i don't know about everybody's heard this story but it's just like the story of when the lights went out at, at in vegas right all the riders yep. stood back and said, Hey, I'm not racing. Everybody raise your hand. Let's not all let's not race. Let's put our foot down. Um, we're not going on with the show. Um, and this is where riders union would work very, very well. If you're part of the union, you got to stand with your guys. Um, but we had, uh, or not we, cause I wasn't racing then, but the story was, is there was a couple riders that went out and raced. And then it was like, once one domino started to fall, they all went out there because there's money on the line. They're still paying, even though there was no lights, was it safe? No, it wasn't safe. A lot of them didn't race it, but there were still some out there that did. Um, I don't know. I think our sport needs it, but I, somebody's going to have to head it up. And the biggest thing is too, is Feld needs to, uh, want to have one too. want to work with the writers union. But as you yeah. add another, you add another, um, you add another chief inside of there, you know, you need, you need more Indians than you do chiefs. So, um, that can be tough getting another player involved, um, you know, to, to have to work with. I think, um, for when you guys were trying to put one together and I remember that, uh, time when you guys were doing that, yeah. My opinion is you got the, you didn't have enough for leverage. And what I mean by that is you guys did like the television wasn't live. So, you know, like, okay, you're not going to compete television, big deal. You know, you're yeah. not, it wasn't live television. So like if you now fast forward, we have live TV and you, you, so the writers have 10 times more leverage, like, all right, yeah. people are tuning in to watch the best guys. I think RV with, um, with all due respect to other people who have tried to develop series, um, and, and, and I wouldn't even call it leagues, but like championships or what have yep. you, uh, if you don't have the best riders, I don't think that our fans are going to turn up for the sport. And that's probably the case in a lot of sports. They want to see the best athletes. Um, we can, we they want to see the best athletes compete so i think that sure. now with live television now you have something to stand on because like all right you guys don't want to march our beat we're not racing we're not racing this week and you don't tell them you don't tell them until it's time to go on air and then all you all the riders leave i think yep. you can do that so now you ha now the riders have that leverage yeah. Uh, and I think leverage is something you need, but also to doing it, somebody that heads up this writer's union, um, and needs to make sure that it's done the proper way, you know, because right. we don't want to hurt the sport, um, nope. by not showing up and by, by doing that. Right. So you don't want to make these, you don't want to shoot from the hip. These need to be very calculated decisions. If there is, um, a, a debate of, of something we, that as a writer, you want something changed. Um, or if it's more money for more purse money from, from AMA pension, um, I think retirement pension would be big. Yep, exactly. So pension is there the funds there? I don't know. I'm not in the nitty gritty of it. Um, all these things are great topics to, to definitely throw on a whiteboard and see where, where we can, how we can improve this. 
every th- what we do in our sport is 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 we need to try to improve it and make it better for for these guys. That's right. Um, and and like you said, re- either some type of retirement or 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 um or good insurance or exactly insurance. So I I think there's definitely a topic there. There's it needs to happen um sooner than later. Um, but it needs to be also done the right way and very calculated. Yeah. And and to to and, and RV brings up a great point, dude. It's not like having a riders union. It, it it can be done in the right way, and not to tick off the uh, the promoters or 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 the broadcast. You know, like it it can be done in a right way that can be positive for everyone, and the outcome be more positive rather than negative for everyone involved. I don't think that anyone wants to go into a relationship and 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 piss off. You know, Feld or 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 nbc like I just think, right yeah and i think the big thing ricky is just really being able to have more of a voice than just on saturday right like right. you know more of a voice um than just with the track or you know hey that's unsafe here we should do this we should do that like really sitting down and having somebody head up the riders union that goes to florida that goes and sits in these meetings and figures out how they can how they can improve it all yeah. the way around improve it for Feld, right. improve it for AMA and improve it. Number one for the athletes. I right. personally think that, you know, without the athletes, there's no show. So we kind of sit at the top of the uh, top of the totem pole for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But we need to have, like I said, we need to have somebody in there that fits that position that, that knows mm-hmm. um, that knows the sport very well. And that wants to ultimately grow it for the, the next generations on down the line. Yeah, I do. Um, and then one, one other thing, uh, that, that makes it tough to have a rider's union also, as you have to, to consider is, uh, all these riders are independent contractors. Uh, so you mm-hmm. can't really compare it to stick and ball sports. Uh, that's a completely another topic of what, what, what another challenge would be. So, uh, uh, that's a great question. Um, Jay King, um, I appreciate, uh, I'm glad you got up with RV and set the question and do that's awesome. Yeah, bro. That's awesome. I think it, it's a good one. Um, well, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you, um, get up with him. And, and so he, yeah, slide into the DMS, uh, Joel, and we'll get you the, we'll get you the, we'll get you the goodies, buddy. That was a good, uh, episode. Hey, everybody, make sure you tune in next week. We're going to be answering a lot of questions and we're working hard to get Austin Forkner on. Hopefully who he will join us. He'll be coming to his second round of that two fifty west or uh, east coast uh round in arlington love going to arlington rv that'd be cool if we get uh austin on and, and like i said oh, we'll yeah. uh we'll rip through a lot of the um we'll rip through a lot of questions uh that uh you great fans have right that's right yeah we'll try to get through them and it'll be good we'll be able to expand a little bit more with him and uh you know really kind of yeah. dig into the nitty-gritty of what's changed him and uh, yeah brought him up to the top top step and and Man, the consistency seems to be there. We'll see. uh, I'm hoping to see that at at Dallas again. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you to all of our great partners. As always, uh, United Motorsports, Quad Lot Case, Boxo USA, and uh, Dunlop. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you for all the fan engagement. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, uh, if you want to watch us, uh, you want to view it and not listen to us, you can always watch it. Uh, We're on demand video version is available on demand at uh, motorsports on nbc's youtube page and then of course uh on peacock as well you can watch watch us there and then uh we're across all of the uh podcast uh platforms so uh whichever podcast platform you use make sure you download uh, our episode we'd be extremely grateful for that so uh we will see you guys next week thanks as always for for all the support we appreciate you rv That's right. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you soon. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.